Welcome back to Trading 360. It's time for the 360 round. Yesterday, a lot of talk about the Pew Research report finding that teenagers are on TikTok and YouTube all day. Primary internet and social media use there. Meanwhile, the streamers are competing for all of these eyeballs. Netflix released its first ever viewership data report, so we have a lot to chew on here. Seema Shah is with us, VP of Insight Sensor Tower, and Dan Raver, streaming media analyst. Thank you both for being here. Seema, I'll start with you. When we talk about Netflix, that was always the name that sort of got out in front, had the biggest viewership. Now I see they're adding games. And in fact, and I don't know how important it is, but I saw a headline that said they're adding, they will have 86 games by the end of the year. They're working on 90 more. They had an outage this week as well. I don't know how quite large that is, but the view Viewership data point is huge. So tell us about that. Yeah, so the way that we look at the data and to understand the viewership is really to understand how long and how much time people spend on the network. And so right now, Netflix is, you know, slowly rolling out um, their password sharing or the lack of stopping the password sharing. So we're seeing that change and we're seeing, but what we're seeing is seeing growth in the ad tier. Um, and from our data, they've already grown their actual advertisers on the platform, so they're actually doing very well on the advertising side. And I think that it, at the end of the day, it's gonna be about having the best content so that you can keep the stickiness of your user. And Netflix, amongst the streamers based on sensor tower data, has the lowest churn and I would say the most loyal, engaged users, which I think bodes well for both their future content, but also their advertising strategy. Right. You also had a writer's strike, so maybe people were going to Netflix. Dan, what, what say you? What do you think about the viewership data? Well, the viewership data doesn't tell us much. It's not talking engagement. It's not talking ad revenue or for anything to their AVOD business. All it says is here's the total number of hours globally a particular piece of content was watched. It's not even based on region. Also, very important to point out, Netflix in their blog post where they announced the data says this data by itself will not determine success of a show or series. So popularity doesn't always equal profitability. And as we know, Wall Street, number one thing they wanna see with all of these companies outside of Netflix, because they're already there, is getting their DTC business to profitability. That's all that matters. You know, if they, you know, I understand what you're saying. You're saying that they're not releasing the ad revenue that goes with it. But it's, if they release this viewership data and they say the most watched show was this, just that alone may spark more interest for that. Um, Seema, I just want to also just get the M&A rumors. Any other thoughts you may have? Because uh, how about the new bundle with Apple? Right. Well, I, I think it, it still goes back kind of to um, what Dan said. It's about the content and figuring out what is the best way to drive increased uh, engagement. And, and so really that's what we focus on as they roll out different initiatives. How do we think that's going to affect their ability to increase engagement or to attract a broader, newer audience? Right. So I think that these types of partnership, all those kinds of things, when you integrate maybe another service that has a slightly different target audience is a chance for you to develop more engaged users and then that's supported by your content. And so you mentioned the writer strike earlier. I just want to point out that, you know, they're able to license content. So for example, Suits has been very successful for them after it already been. So there are ways for them yeah. to continue to maintain and develop or have great content while managing their content costs and, you know, engaging their audience. Right, understood. And you know, I get. And you mentioned engagement numbers, and that's a key one because that obviously Dan can get more um, ads. What about Barbie dropping on Max? I see Paramount as a big loser on the S and P, um, or at least one of the big losers that I wrote down here. Yeah, on the S and P. What do you think about some of these other names? Well, Paramount one is, is is that's one everyone's watching. As of end of Q3, they had 1.8 billion in cash. Now they're going to get three billion on a pro forma basis for the Simon and Schuster sale in, in this quarter, uh, but they're still losing a lot of money on their direct to consumer business. Whereas flip side, Warner Bros. Discovery had 111 million positive EBITDA in Q3 on D2C. We know Netflix is projecting 6.5 billion dollars of free cash flow this year. Disney says they'll get their D2C business by uh, free cash flow by. Uh, end of Q3 
Q4 of 2024. So this all comes down to profitability when an engagement standpoint, to your point with Barbie, the, the windowing, as we call it, in terms of how long it takes for a piece of content to get from movie theater distribution to streaming has really shrunk. And these companies are certainly hoping that if they're bringing new content like that, popular content, that it's going to help from a churn standpoint and it's going to increase engagement. We don't know if that's the case, but that's what everybody's working towards. Great to see you both. Thank you so very much. Seema Shah, Sensor Tower, Dan Rayburn, Streaming Media Analyst.